something like that. And then her first words were, I'm a boy. So after that, they went through the whole process of changing her birth certificate and changing her name and raising her as a boy. And he said a speech at the Milk Diversity Foundation. Mm -hmm. And he said that he's the happiest that he's ever been. And he wanted to thank his parents for supporting him and stuff like that. It was really, really cool. Awesome. That's a great. Great. Anyone else? All right. Well, I want to make it a little short today because uh, when's our final, guys? Saturday. Saturday. Seven to ten. ten. So I'm having anxiety that the door is going not, to not be open, but it's going to be open, right? Okay. I'm having anxiety about that. All right, guys. Uh, so let's cut that. Let's, I'm sorry. We'll end with you, and let's do our last awkward black girl, and then we'll go into the lecture quickly, and then I want to go into study, final study, okay? Final study today, okay? I'm basically a disappointment to my mom. <coughs> what? What are you doing here? Why are you naked this time of night? You're not supposed to be here right now. Well, I'm sick of getting your mail at our mansion. Townhouse is not a mansion. Name it and claim it. And that little negative attitude of yours is what keeps you struggling so hard you can't even afford pants. Okay, so I need new clothes. Thanks for the mail, Mom. Is that alcohol on your breath? <sighs> your Aunt Marie used to drink and wear negligees in the night. You see what that got her? Hustler. Not even top rate porn. Mom, I'm trying to get ready for bed. Well, how long did that take? It's not like you have to wrap your hair. <laughs> Place is a mess. Uh, you know, your cousin, Riri, she, she's now the head of her department, and I was thinking that maybe you could ask her for a job. I mean, beats wasting your time over there at Chunky Town. Jay? Sometimes I wish I could white girl my mom. Shut the fuck up, Mom! I hate you! You're such a bitch! I hope Dad leaves your whore ass. I hate you! Jay! What? What are you doing? Nothing! Exactly. Get it together. Get it together. Be somebody? Like I'm hooking in these streets? I am somebody. I am somebody! Oh. I thought you were wrong. You didn't get my text? I got something. Oh, stupid ass autocorrect. Sorry. Oh. It's not what it looks like. Wait, what does it look like? Like I was trying to put it on ya, like Ja Rule. I'm, I'm dressed like this because I was eating cereal with hot milk and it it got really hot in here. And then the AC's broken and it just it's got worse and worse. Um, well it's pretty cold out here. Oh, come in, I'll, I'll be... That. Leave it to my mother to kill my spirit and my sexy. It's like my mom always has a way of making me feel like I've accomplished nothing in life. My apartment sucks. My clothes suck. My job sucks. Everything sucks. Okay, well, for the record, um, I liked what you were wearing before. <laughs> but you do hate your job. I don't know, maybe it is time for a change. To do what? I don't know. Something you love to do. Like me with my art. Check this out. Huh? I hope White Jay's not from Colorado. Oh, yeah. Hey, do you watch Game of Thrones? Yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot, actually. Jay's right. I need to figure out what I'm actually good at and try.
If I didn't work at Struggles R Us, maybe I could actually focus. If you're starting a cleanse, we can't share this office, Gassy. I'm looking through old presentations for ideas. Ugh, whatever. The project's finished. I'll be telling Jesus how worthless you've been. Snitches get stitches, bitch. And I'm not worthless. I am somebody. Why do I have this microphone? We gonna get crunk and sing some karaoke? No. It's praise hour. It's about time you worshiped your father, Jesus. <laughs> well, I just wanted to give a shout out to my girl, Peaches. What's up? This is why bitches get fired. <laughs> this is not a hip hop station or the NFL. We do not give shout outs. The microphone is to show my solidarity. For a spectacular new branding idea that came from Nina and Ye's effort. Jesus! Mi hermano! We both know who brought you that idea! Nina, please sit down. Take that, Romano. We are going to create a jingle! Like Chili's Baby Back Ribs? That song is a heartburn. <laughs> Each team will come up with a jingle based on our new campaign. Gutbusters, the big solution. The winners will record their jingle with one of corporate's recording artists and receive a $600 bonus. You think Jesus made it rain in the club the way these niggas livened up? <laughs> yeah, Darius does have some sick beats. Thank you, but no. We'll leave the beats to the professionals. Have your jingles ready tomorrow. Look, I've done my time. You come up with the jingle. Oh, I plan to. And I'm gonna knock it out of the park, get that bonus, and do something with my life, Mom. Did you just call me Mom? No. Yeah, you did. Hearing really things. This is finally my big moment to show these fools what I'm good at. Hey, listen here, you fat bitch. Go on and buy our motherfucking shit. Gut buster. No, it's too bad. Lap band, lap band. It's not enough for you, man. Everybody, get off your gut and go out exercise, you dumb slut. Ugh, I can't no curse. How dope would it be to record in a real studio? <laughs> I'm in the studio, ho. ho. Look at me now. Now my Bessie to the left, she be holding me down. Damn. Got my boo in the spot, he be putting it down. Damn. I am somebody, mama. Is you proud? Bitch! I am so proud. <laughs> Two for one mojitos and male stripper happy hour at Thirsty Amigos? Okay, so the male strippers are actually the drunk CPAs from H&R Block, but it's so fun to watch. Let's do this, I need it. What rhymes with lap man? Fat man, slant rhyme. So are we going? I can leave early from the dance studio. I really gotta work on this jingle. Working with a recording artist would be so hot. Girl, you got that. Jingles are your jam. Thanks, girl. I'll see you later. <laughs> you can read, can't you? Mm-hmm. 
You better check yourself before you rock yourself Cause we at Gut Busters are good for your health You don't even need wealth Just a Dub 99 will have your body looking real fine So pick up the phone, don't call us collect And your friendly gut coach will get you in check Go Busters, Gut Busters, Gut Busters, Gut Busters That was great <laughs> Move your limbs an Asian homeless dude? That's an omen, right? Cece's right. I got this. They gonna learn today. Wait, did I miss the memo? Why is everybody dressed like the Negro Family Circus? Alright everybody, let's get started. Who's first? We'll go first. When there's someone fat in your neighborhood, who you gonna call? Cut busters! Word to your mother. Thank you for stealing from classic cinema. Jerry, Darius, Betty. You want to want to bust that get Oh, girl You can do it if you want to, girl You can do it if you want to, girl You can do it You can do stop, it Stop, stop This country's seen enough natural disasters Jesus I feel inspired by your heavenly father and mine to bring about some heavenly joy to this conference room today. May I? Okay. Bless you. No, Lord, clean away. This fat and build up. Let the heavens change my thoughts. Give me God. I said, give me God. God busters. And help me look fly. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise Him. Nina and Ye. Oh, Ye volunteered to perform our jingle while I sit here and give her moral support. <laughs> Ye, you wanna dazzle us? You can offer me moral support by dying. Good luck, Jay. Thanks. Whoa. Everybody's staring at me. Calm down, Jay. Just, just, um. Uh, I forgot my jingle. Can I do it tomorrow? That would not be fair to your coworkers. Sister Mary and Denise, you are the jingle winners! My mom was right. I'm a nobody at a dead-end job. It's officially time for me to three-point turn my way out this bitch. I just want you to be the best you that you can be. Alright, 
testing. All right. Um, if you're interested, this Sunday after our, our final, uh, the Greek Theater is actually doing a Philippines uh, fundraiser. So if you want to see Apple and Jabwalkies, if you're into like – like a dance, uh, there will be tickets available. You have to go online and buy them. But if you want to uh, support Philippine uh, relief efforts, uh, I suggest you do that. Yes. Greek Theater, LA. Yes, the Greek Theater, LA. Google it. Okay. I, I usually don't know the tickets. Okay. All right, guys, today's the last day. Once 8.30 uh, hits, this is the last official day of the class. Nothing after this. The class is done, right? Class is done, okay? Uh, we're going to have our final what day? Saturday. So get here. I did not choose that final, by the way. It's actually pre-selected for me, okay? Um, I did try to ask to get out of it uh, to change time, but I got to know. So um, we'll all be here on Saturday, okay? So uh, please bring an AA2 um, Scantron, okay? It's just the regular Scantron, okay? It's identical. It's comprehensive from the beginning to the end of class, and it's, it's dental. Let's get through this last lecture, and let's go through the final, okay? After this, we're going to... What? No, um, uh, the, the essay last for midterm was actually 10 points, right? So instead, I'm just going to add five more, which, which is exactly 10 points as well, five true falses, okay? So that's something you... Uh, I want to make a break. Finals. I know you guys are very. I know you guys are very <laughs> overwhelmed. Okay. All right, Miss Mallory, read it out for me. Rigoberta Manchu, internationally famous. Go ahead. Get wait a couple minutes. Uh, Keish Mayan. Oh wait, I have to read the title. Yes. <laughs> write it down. Write it down. Rigoberta Manchu. Manchu. Keish Mayan. Guatemalan, 1983 autobiography, I, Rigoberta Manchu, made her internationally famous for promoting indigenous rights. 1992 won the Nobel Peace Prize. All right, so the main thing I want you to know is she's very well famous. One of the first and only indigenous people, um, very rare. I, I have never actually heard of another indigenous Nobel Prize winner. Uh, but she's one of our only, and female as well. Um, there might be another one, but the only one I know of, uh, that she's Guatemalan. She's indigenous from, she's an Indian actually from Guatemala, and she wrote a book about what's it like to be Indian, right? Indigenous Indian, right? And it, it basically she talked about the oppression that Indians face, and it became internationally famous. In 1992, the Nobel uh, Committee awarded her a Nobel Peace Prize. So that's that's the biggest it gets, right? There's no more bigger. Okay, so if you don't know who she is, a uh, sister, you guys are seniors. Uh, now you know she's like world famous. Usually in another class, I would teach her whole book, but, uh, but it'd be another class. But this her book is actually taught in thousands of universities around the globe. Okay, so he, world famous. Ms. Mallory, go ahead. Born a poor Mayan Indian, told of the horrors that indigenous indigenous faced by the Spanish descendants. All right, so there she is. She actually recently just went to Cal Poly. So actually she went to Cal Poly. It was huge. It was like, it literally was rings and rings of people around the buildings. Um, it was sold out like uh, very quickly, but people just came anyway to try to get in, and it was amazing. Okay, so she gave a speech. So she basically is world famous, Kichimayan. All right, Ms. Allery, we'll look at that later. Okay, Ms. Allery, can you read it? <laughs> we are not... Myths of the past, ruins in the jungle, or zoos. We are, I can't really see. <laughs> we are people? We are people who want to be respected. All right, so a lot of times when you talk about indigenous Indians, you think they're extinct, right? They're no longer here, right? Uh, such as like Native Americans. Oh, they're extinct. And she actually, in her in her kind of uh, very well-quoted, she's very well-quoted, she's like Maya Angelou, she kind of talks about how actually Indians are still here, okay, and they're thriving in some ways and also oppressed in other ways. But again, they're not a relic of the past, right? So a lot of times this issue that she's talking about is very prevalent in Latin America, also in Mexico, right? You kind of like push away the Indian. Indian, right? She's basically saying, we're here, okay? Ms. Mallory? An eight-year-old agricultural, agricultural worker. Manchu helps mom in the fincas to pick coffee at eight, but does not get paid. Mother only breastfeeds as it would be double feeding if you fed the baby. All her mother money, what? All her mother's money, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> All her mother's money went to medications for her sick children. Manchu tried to alleviate pain from her mom. Saw a lot of Indian abuse 
forced, to pro forced prostitution, low wage, harsh work conditions as an eight-year-old. All right, so on the left you see, actually around the world, there's lots of children's books about, about her, actually, cartoons. So if you ever want to buy it for your, your child, uh, you might want to go there. Um, wonderful, I have some. Um, so when she was eight years old in Guatemala, the Indians, basically, they're forced off their land, right? They're kind of, even though they've been there for a long, long time, right? But then they actually went back to the land as workers, right? So in kind of like an international uh, corporation went in there, right? And then... Uh, they're called fincas, I guess, fincas. Um, she picked coffee at eight years old. Um, she didn't get paid. She, it was like part of her mom's thing, right? So again, this is like child labor, right? It's huge, right? Internationally, there's a lot of child laborers all over the world. Um, and it's interesting. She talks about how people survive. Her mom has a baby on her back, picking coffee with her hands, and she only will breastfeed her baby because if you feed a baby and you also feed yourself, that's double feeding, right? But they're kind of starving and they have low wages. And so she only breastfeeds her baby, okay? Which is not enough nutrition at certain points, right? So that is something to talk about, okay? So basically her mom makes very little money, but all the money she makes is kind of it's medication for her children. Because think about it, these are agricultural workers. They get pesticides sprayed all over their face all the time, right? They're breathing it in. Um, and again, uh, it's, they get sick, right? And sometimes they die, okay? So she, as eight years old, she kind of understands, like, how her mom's being oppressed and how her mom's being treated. And at eight years old, she sees that the people who are being abused tend to be Indians. They tend to be indigenous, right? That's a pretty big deal to realize at eight years old, right? And she, what she realizes is, hey, how come all the Indians are being, some of the Indians are being forced to be prostitutes, Right, do you guys remember um, sex for visas, et cetera, right? Uh, Kevin Bales, the Thai uh, sex slaves, right? So she realized that some of the Indians are so poor, they're forced into prostitution, low wage, and just, and this is at eight years old, okay? So this is kind of a heavy thing to, to realize eight years old. That's incredible. And she writes about this in, in her actual autobiography that got the uh, Nobel. Ms. Mallory? Cat, death of her little brother in the fika. Difficulty of communicating with other Indians. Two of her brothers die, one from pesticide spray and youngest from malnutrition. Mom had to go to work or she would lose her job. She had to abandon swollen tummy baby. Okay. Housing held many different types of Indians who spoke different languages and they had to sign to communicate. The owners of Manchu, Manchu's family left family... I cannot see. Sorry, excuse me. They <laughs> asked the Machu fan to leave, and her ethnic neighbors actually accompany her. They, they go with her. Oh, okay. Owners claim that she owned pharmacy money, and they saved to pay it back for funeral, et cetera. Uh, let me change that, okay? Found relief solid, solitary in cultural celebrations. Okay. All right. Okay, so the main thing is, um, as a child, she sees her, two of her brothers die. One... Um, he was actually sprayed with pesticide spray and um, died of poisoning, right, as a worker. The other one, a, a malnutrition, right, um, the, that uh, basically you don't have enough to eat, right? So this is what she realizes and she sees when she's just a little kid, okay, that she writes about in her extremely famous autobiography, okay? So when, so her mom, it was like a, like kind of this terrible choice, right? Her baby's sick. Her baby uh, has malnutrition, right? You're only feeding breast milk, right? And it's a terrible situation. But I want you guys to think about the situation, what you would do, okay? Obviously, the baby maybe have been, has been sprayed with pesticides because she's picking, like the baby's picked, right, with uh, the mom. So the mom's given a choice. Go to work and get paid the money that we use to feed the other kids or and uh, leave your child, right? Or stay with your child and lose your job. Right? Those are one of the, like, the worst, that's like the, one of the worst scenarios you can actually do as a person, right? And again, this is what, some, this is her, what her mom had to do. Go to work, leave my, my very, very sick baby, I can't afford for a doctor, of course, and, or, you know, stay and get fired and get no money for all my family, and they would be all starving, because they're all, already semi-starving, okay? Uh, so that's a huge issue, okay? So actually living with other Indians is really tough because, and, and also great, but one thing that people don't notice is that there are hundreds of different languages that Indians have. So they, they can't communicate with each other, but even though they can't communicate, they can sign, 
right? And they use kind of cultural kind of activities to kind of get together, right? They're really prideful of their culture. Even though the, t all the different Indian groups in Guatemala speak different languages, right? So uh, that's something important. So regardless, the owners actually ask the, fa the Manchu fan to leave, right? Uh, something happens, and um, her, no one really helps her. Um, well, um, specifically her ethnic neighbors, her uh, fellow Kichi Mayan Indians actually leave with her, right? And so that's, that's a big thing, okay? And the, the owners uh, actually claim that she owes, like, pharmacy money, which is, like, medicine money. And so um, after her baby dies, right, she goes back and her entire family kind of pool money together, right, to pay off this debt of medicine. Right, so it's huge. Uh, if you ever want to read the book, I highly recommend it. It's a it's a great book. Okay, and one of the things that she found relief in is the culture. She found power and solidarity with culture. Right, because she had no money. Okay, she had no food. Right, so I want you to um, know about this. Okay, and I want you to think about this question: poverty's difficult question. Uh, questions. What would you do? And again, I, I want to go through this because I want to go through the through the study final study guide. What do you do? You you go to your job which feeds your family, right, uh, with your little baby sick, or you stay with your son and try to help your son, but you don't have any kind of, uh, you know, background to, to help your son. So I want you guys to all think that. Um, if we had more time, we'd go into it, but that's the question that, and that her mom had to face, okay? So really, uh, so you kind of read like two of the very famous chapters, okay? All right, so basically in her book, she talks about how her family was forced off her land, that her indigenous ancestral land that everyone communally owns, right? Everyone owns it together. No one owns the land, right? But she talks about in Guatemala, the Spanish descendants, like, pushed the Indians out, and then now they're, like, working at these IMF corporations, right? And she talks about how she's illiterate, and she's actually illiterate in Spanish, right? She doesn't know Spanish, right? So a lot of people don't understand that, you know, for instance, maybe the indigenous Indians in uh, Mexico, maybe they might have issues with Spanish, right? If you're Oaxacan or something, right? So people don't understand that diversity that's going on, okay? Um, lastly, uh, she talks about, and very controversial and very tragically, okay? Her father was uh, an was, uh, organizer, a socialist organizer. And she talks about how she saw her father uh, shot to death in front of her, right? So her father was trying to fight back for the land that they had, okay? And... Um, he lost. They shot him. Like the owners of the the uh, land uh, shot her, and and she says that how she talked about her how her mother her other two brothers died and how her mother was raped and killed. Right. That's in the autobiography. Right. And this is something that happens commonly. Okay. Because structural violence to native Indians. Right. So this happens a lot to Indians. I I want to emphasize that. This story is a common sentiment to how Guatemala, Kichimayan in particular, are treated in Guatemala, right? So this story is common, right? So it's kind of shocking, but this is how people are treated. Think of like kind of, uh, you know, how Filipinos are treated or something other places, okay? So that is uh, our short expert that we have from our last class that we're uh, going through, okay? But we're going to talk about the controversy. And there is a controversy about her. And I want you guys to think, who's my anthro majors again? Where are my anthro majors? Raise your hand. All right, so you guys may, maybe want to help me. Uh, I have to get through this because uh, I want to. I know you guys want to go to the final, okay? All right, anthro majors. I want and everyone. I, I think that if you haven't taken a lot of cultural relativism classes or ethnocentrism, there's a guy. He's an anthropologist, rich, you know, Anglo, white male, and he's talked about how his name is David Stoller. And he said, the Riga Machu, okay, so first of all, we know now, right, she's an indigenous and Mayan Indian. She talks about the abuse that happened, the rape of her mother, the murder of her father, the multiple deaths of her brothers, right? Um, so she talks about the communal suffering, right? So this guy, there's huge controversy about her because now this guy, David Stoller, said she is a liar. So write that down. She's a liar. That's what he said, right? He says, Riga Bamachu, she's a liar. This is not true, okay? So, but I want you to unpack that. I want you to, like, unpack it more, okay? Number one, he says that actually she wasn't illiterate. She went to Catholic school, and it was like a private school. So how could she be illiterate, right? So Mr. Angel, that's what she, he said, right? He tracked down some of the people that are her fellow classmates in Catholic school, right? So he says that he went, she went up to maybe, like, sixth grade. Okay. Number two, uh, he says that the deaths, okay, there were deaths of her, par her father, but her father wasn't killed by the owners, the Spanish descendants, right? Instead was killed by a family member, okay? Um, 
the mother was actually raped and murdered, okay? So details, that's what he's saying, okay? But I want you to unpack it deeper, and I want you to think really deeply about this, okay? So Riga Bernard Manchu fought back, okay? And she said, you know what? In my culture, you're being ethnocentric, white male, you know, uh, American, you know, ca uh, ca a capitalist male. She said, in our culture, Indians, if one of us gets raped, we all get what? We all get raped. If one of us is murdered, we all get right. right. And the past is not the past, okay? And time is not like relevant, like one point. It goes from the past. And think of comfort women, right? The past is not the past to Korea, okay? The past is not the past to China, okay? These things are ongoing, okay? So she argues that, you know what? Her suffering, it's true, and these things happened, right? So her mother was raped and murdered. Her dad was killed, and her, and her brothers were killed, right? Um, so he told her, he told David Stoller, you know, get the bleep out of your beep beep. Okay, ivory tower, okay? And actually, come and see the indigenous um, Kiji Mayans. Look at how we're being treated terribly. I'm treated horribly by the kind of like Spanish overlords, okay? So we'll end it with this. Um, I think um, not just anthro majors, I want everyone to think about it. Whose side are you on? Okay, because that's a controversy, right? Um, did did uh, these things happen? Yes. Uh, are we going to go with the factual? Okay, so uh, Ms. Mallory, what do you think? Ms. Chris, Ms. Ashley, what do you think? Because this is like, we're going to end it here. There's two sides of the controversy. Um, I just don't see her lying about that. Right. Her, her mother was raped and yeah, killed. Yeah, her mother was yeah. raped and murdered. And then, I mean, who is this guy to say that, like, she's lying? Like, why? Okay. So is details, it, okay. I, okay. I, and I mean, um, what proof? I mean, what more well, does he need from her? Well, he, he interviewed her fellow students in, in Catholic school, right? Mm -hmm. So she was actually at least illiterate to some point, up, up to sixth grade. But in her biography, she talks about how she was not illiterate. Maybe in her eyes, that is illiterate to her. Maybe, maybe, right? So Excellent point. That's her, okay. that's her view of literacy. Huh. Mm -hmm. Like, because um, I talked about this in my um, History of Latin American class a few um, quarters ago. And, um, like, she basically said, like, yeah, this didn't happen to me, but it did happen to my people, which is the same thing. But the only thing that I didn't get is, like, why didn't she, like, preface her book with that? Because, like, I mean, like, I understand that she feels like it happened to her. Yeah, I totally understand that. But, I mean, like, I can see where David Stoller is coming in, too, because she basically said, all of this stuff happened to me. Like as a person, and then especially when like you're putting it on such a broad platform to other people who don't understand your culture, like I can see how like I can see both sides. But I mean, there was like a lot of things that she, you know. Okay. So I want you to unpack that. In some cultures, if it happens to just one of you, it happens to all of us, right? Mr. Aaron, go ahead. I don't know if I can pass this back or Ms. Mallory, can pass it back. Where am I going? <laughs> First off, I want to say sorry for missing class when you were doing the graduating seniors thing. Oh, let's give a hand I'm for bad. Mr. Aaron, he's oh, graduating senior. Let's give a hand. Thank you, our MC. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, so I also was going to bring this issue up uh, during current events. Um, there's a human rights activist, um, I guess you could say, by the name of Somali Mom. And uh, essentially, sh her story was that she was. Uh, a former victim of human trafficking in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she kind of um, was kidnapped as a teenager, and then a decade later she escaped, and then she started an organization called the Somali Mom Foundation, and it collected, like, millions and millions and got a lot of uh, attention from a lot of celebrities and stuff, um, kind of, like, bringing the awareness of human trafficking in Cambodia. And then that organization like rescued a lot of girls. Um, and recently she's being investigated because her story is quote unquote being fabricated. And so it's been like, just like years after years of like lies, but I mean, nothing has been proven yet. So it's essentially, it's, it's like this in terms of like, we really don't know what the truth is, you know, but essentially it's kind of like for the better, that lie has kind of, helped a lot more people than it's like done. I mean, it's obviously it's immoral that she lied about her story and it, I mean, if um, Miss Riga Bertha lied about hers, um, it is kind of, 
Well, it, like not exactly lying, but maybe right. details different. Right, it right. Depends on who, what side you're on. What side you're on? Because she says it did happen, but it's kind of yeah. So depends I'm, on who. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. depends on I guess whose um, point of view. But again, it kind of just brought awareness and light to that story and that right. situation. So excellent, great point, Mr. Aaron. Thanks. Okay, so guys. Every single day, there is oppression of Indians in Guatemala. That is a very factual thing, right? Um, every single day, uh, women are treated a certain way. They tend to be racialized in Guatemala, tend to be Indian. And there have been many recorded instances of rape and of, of oppression and, of course, in the, uh, the factory. So, again, I, I'm putting it out to you. Only you can decide what to believe in, okay? So these are the both two sides. You're going to have form your own decision, right? And for my anthro majors, you know there's something called ethnocentrism, right? Um, and I, 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 you know that, you know, for different cultures, if you're culturally relative and that culture believes if it happens to me, it happens to everyone, or if it happens to you, it happens to me, right? That is a different cultural imagination, right? So it is not a lie in that culture, right? And again, was her mom raped and killed? Yes. Was her brothers and fathers all killed? Yes. Okay, but details depend. It depends whatever you want to believe in, whatever. Th th those are the both sides, okay? So anyone else comments? Yes. So some people argue that it's a composite, like Mr. Aaron said. Well, she brought you know lots of attention to how Indians are treated, right? And they are treated like that way. That's what I was going to actually add on to was that even whether the Cambodian girl or um, this lady, like even if the details um, do differ, those things still happen to her and. It's kind of sad because within our culture, when certain issues kind of happen abroad, sometimes we may even uh, turn a blind eye to it. Like there are people outside of America and even within America who are either starving or being trafficked. Yet we don't really realize it until someone comes in with some, you know, like intense story. And if those details make it that much more intense and attract that much more attention, the cause is initially good. And it's not like it didn't happen. It wasn't like that none of that stuff did happen to her. It's just... Those, you know, I guess you could say kind of admitting the truth or like that ethnocentrism like you're talking about, like about how it happened to someone else because that could be like a friend within her community too. You're talking about how they're more community-based. It could be one of those people that she was even living with and she may have witnessed it and that person could have been like a father to her even if it wasn't necessarily her father. And either way, that's still someone you know, who's young or if she were young, witnessing a death. Like, I don't know. I don't think that necessarily waters it down anymore. But at the same time, it kind of omits the truth a little bit because it, but at, but it draws more attention, which is good because otherwise she may not have even won the Nobel Prize and someone else may not have gained, like, the insight about what's going on. Uh, well, her her brothers were mur were killed. Her her brother did die of murder. Her mom was raped and killed. These, these are facts. These are facts. This, her mother was raped and killed. Um, but is it a fact that her father? She didn't see. It's been proven that she didn't see her father killed. But in her doc, in her, she said she saw her father being killed. But was he killed? A little bit. But yes, it depends on what you want to think, right? So. What, what do you think? Uh, I said what I said. I was just oh, okay. <laughs> um, anyone over here? What, what's your idea? These are two very different ideas, right? Um, the actual culture sees it differently. So, any comments? Sorry, okay. I don't like the mic. Yes. <laughs> I guess. Um, I don't know. I just feel like um, this anthropologist, I don't know, I just feel like you don't know what that person has ever gone through. Um, you don't know how they're, even how their day's going or anything. So what gives you the right to judge them when you don't even know what really has happened in their life? Um, that's just the way I see it. Like, you can only go off of what somebody tells you, whether they're fabricating it or not. That's up to like an individual to believe in, but I mean, I personally believe Rigoberta, um, whether the details are a little fabricated or something, it's just, I don't know, it's, I just feel like he did, like people don't have the right to judge others or try to put others down or say others aren't who they are or what happened to them did or didn't happen to them when they don't even know. So. And guys, I, I do want to emphasize something. I want you guys to think about that something. American, David Stoller is American. What kind of system do we have in America? Starts with a C, economic system, capitalism. Guess what? Rigoberta is advocating, starts with S, 
Socialism. So unpack it further. Do you see how there is a huge clash, right, in uh, what people want? Okay. Mr. Reichel? Uh, you think capitalism is socialism? Yes. Uh, in what way? Right, like China or something. Like that way or? Europe, yeah, yeah, right, yes. All right, so guys, it's up to you to believe whatever you want to believe. These are the both two sides. I, I want you to unpack it, whatever you want to believe, okay? Those are the two sides. Uh, it's up to you, just like the thousand gender, if, kind of the one day we did a lot of gender theories. A lot of you probably disagree with each other for all the different genders, right? Is it performative? Is it, is it uh, biological, etc. okay? All right, guys, I want you to grab five people around you, okay? There actually is a, a study, a small study on uh, looking at... Um, Asian Amer East Asian Americans, they tend to have a, a, sm a slightly higher GPA, and that's because they tend to study in what? All right, so everyone make a group of four, and we're going to divide up the study guide. Everyone's going to write it. You're going to divide it at one-fourth, 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 all right? And if you guys can get their emails, and we're going to do it together as a group, okay? Everyone take your study guide out uh, and get your group of four. The first person does the first fourth, okay? You do the who, what, where, when, how, and why, and thesis of that article. Are you going to do the second fourth? Who, what, where, when, hot, why, how, or the second fourth? The third fourth, right? Who, what, when, where, and the fourth fourth, okay? So divide up, okay? So let's do that, guys. Get in the fourth. One, two, three, okay? Exchange emails, okay? And let's, let's give that some time. And then we're going to do it together. So make some friends, guys, your last minute friends. All right. Get in your group. Okay.
Um, it's right here. If you have extra credit, turn it in now. This class ends in like 20 minutes. It officially ends. The class is over. So if you have any extra credit, anything else, turn it in now. It's in. It's done. Okay. Class is officially over. So class is done. Yes. The average exam time will be 30 minutes. Um, but someone will always do it in six minutes. There will always be that one. 50 questions. Remember at 45? It's 50. Five more extra, five more true false instead of the essay. Yeah. So, but. Like maybe like week eight, there was like one week that I couldn't find the article. Oh, they're all, 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 all the students. Are, wh wh which one are you talking about? Which article? I don't even remember. Because oh, and there should be in the week that is, but we don't have a tenth week, so I I put uh, for this week I put it in week nine. Okay. Yeah. This, this so there. Yeah. These past five weeks we didn't read anything in the book, right? Um, we did. Yeah. Some of the book. It's actually. Do you have a syllabus? It's all. It's from. Um, no, no, I know. Yeah. I, I'm looking yeah. at it. I was just a little confused. I'll, I'll go on my book again. Yeah. It's it was like everything combination like different things. I don't know what week, but. And do you mind if I turn in those um, extra credit summaries on final day? It has to be today. This class ends at 8:30. So. If you want to email it to me now, but it's it's done. This class is done. Okay. The class is For all no. Five of them, it was just one extra credit point. It was one point. It doesn't make any difference. Oh, okay. I, it makes okay. literally no difference. Okay. But okay. the class is done in okay. ten more minutes. Okay, I just like two of them. But okay. I guess. Um, if I have it, I have it. You'll get a point. Like, it's like no. It's like not really. It okay. doesn't do any difference. So. Thank you okay. So Thank you so much. Okay. okay.
Great. Okay, I will uh, give you that thank you card oh, yeah. after. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Can I use this? Oh, yeah, 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 of yeah. course. Yeah. Just don't bend it. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. All right. Any questions? Questions? No. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Questions? Combine together, guys. That's all improve your grade. Combine. Okay. Any questions? Just one fourth, one fourth, one third. <laughs> know the who, what, when, where, why, and thesis. Okay. All right. Great. Any questions? Yes. Uh huh. Uh, question uh -huh. for the last one. Ah. Okay.
One, two, three, testing. Testing, one, two, three. All right, everyone, a lot of people are leaving. I'd like to thank you for taking Women's Studies uh, 001. Thank you. Um, you guys are awesome, and thank you for taking the class. The class is officially over, so thank you. <laughs> Seniors, you rock. Mr. Aaron, you rock, okay. So thank you, if the class is over. You, of course, I will stay here if you have any questions. I'll stay as long as you want, but class is over. Officially, it's done, okay. Forever, holy peace. <laughs>